Hello. Um, this talk presents results from our, of our work on using some of the advanced features of DOA 2000Q. And it is a joint work with Elijah Pilovsky from Los Alamos and George Hahn from Harvard. So what kind of annealing options do you have in mind? Let us start by reminding that G-Wave is designed to solve an ising problem and let H and J be the coefficients. A typical call to G-Wave would include parameters H and J, the coefficients of the ising problem, and a few other parameters. Uh, the most uh, commonly used other parameters are the annealing time and the number of the reads. Other parameters, a couple of dozens of them, are less often used and for many of them, there is limited information and guidance on how to make the best use of them. In this talk, I want to discuss our experience with using uh, some of uh, these parameters. Specifically, we're discussing the spin reversal transform and the schedule parameters. Uh, in this talk, I will cover three different uses. First, I'll talk about spin reversal. That is uh, how it, we, we can optimize it. Next, I will discuss how we use quenching to infer information about uh, the quantum annealing process. Finally, I will talk about the age gain feature and how we used it to provide an initial solution to the wave. So first we start with spin reversal. It will be brief, just a couple of slides uh, to leave uh, more time for the other two topics. Uh, so what is a spin reversal? We, we are given an ising and the idea is that if we flip the sign of one variable and a few of the coefficients, the value won't change. So more generally, uh, we can select an entire set of spins to flip and compute the coefficients of the corresponding equivalent icing. So despite the equivalence, uh, such a change may help actually alleviate some of the hardware biases. Uh, D-Wave has a built-in function, num spin reversal trans transforms, uh, which specifies uh, some number of spin reversals uh, and then uh, which spins will be flipped uh, choice, uh, chosen randomly. Uh, so uh, the question we're gonna answer, try to answer is uh, how much can we gain if instead of random, we optimize uh, the choices uh, spins to flip. In order to optimize the choice of the set of bits to flip, uh, we use a genetic algorithm. We made this choice because of the large number of variables and the lack of any apparent structure of the problem. Uh, so here are the results. Uh, we can compare our algorithm against uh, D-Wave spin reversal version and D-Wave's regular annual without spin reversal. Each plot is uh, for a different problem and uh, lower um, is better. The green line uh, shows uh, the value found after each iteration of the genetic algorithm. We see that the genetic algorithm results are consistently the best uh, and the D-Wave spin reversal performs generally better than the version without spin reversal, but not always. Actually in the last plot, the version without spin reversal is actually a bit uh, better than the one with spin reversal. Uh, one can find more details of the algorithm and more experiments uh, in the paper shown on the bottom. So next we go uh, to discuss uh, the quenching and how useful for it uh, to get information about the annual process. First, uh, let us quickly review how one uses schedules to control the annealing process. Given an input ising, the Hamiltonian specifying the quant quantum evolution is a linear combination of an initial Hamiltonian and the problem one, 
And that linear combination is weighted by function AS and BS of a variable S uh, between zero and one called a nil fraction. So uh, to define a schedule, we have to specify S as a function of the time T. So here are examples of two schedules. In the standard one, S uh, grows linearly with T and hence A and B uh, as functions of T on the bottom left have the same shape as in the previous slide. In quenching on the right, S increases linearly until some point of time uh, in the top right figure, after which it abruptly goes up to one. Uh, on the bottom right, uh, you can see the corresponding functions A and B for quenching. So what is our plan for using quenching? Our idea is that since quenching ends the nil so fast, it may have preserved some information about the state that the time just before the quench starts. Uh, so specifically, we want to collect uh, quench information at regularly spaced points, which we call slices, and then put it together to get a picture of how the state evolved uh, during the entire quench. Uh, there is one problem though, uh, due to hardware limitations, uh, the shortest quench uh, that is allowed uh, takes time about one microsecond. So for some problems, one microsecond might be okay, but for others, it will be too long and it may significantly alter the state before the quench. So how can we mitigate this issue? The idea is, uh, since we are not allowed to decrease the time of the quench, we could possibly slow down the annealing, uh, meaning to choose icing or Kiba problems for which annealing takes much longer than one microsecond to produce uh, some good high quality solutions. Uh, how do we find such Kiba or icing problem that take longer to anneal? We use again a genetic algorithm uh, whose fitness function is the energy difference with one microsecond annual and 1000 microsecond annual. Uh, so to produce problems with uh, desired properties. Okay, so in the figure on the bottom, uh, we illustrate the effect of the optimization. It shows the progression of the annual in terms of energy for a cubo that hasn't been optimized compared to an optimized cubo. So as you can see, there is a clear difference, not only in the uh, amount of energy improvement, uh, but also in the features and the details we can observe on the plot. So here are some slicing results. The top row uh, figures are the results uh, for a chimera um, Ising problem, uh, which is an Ising problem whose structure conforms uh, to the chim chimera graph. And the blue line on the left shows the average energy and the red one on uh, the left pl plot is the minimum energy. In the top right, the evolution of the Hamming distance is shown uh, for the same type of graph. Um, so here the Hamming distance is defined as the number of differences between bit values in uh, two adjacent, adjacent slices. Uh, on the bottom, uh, similar information is given for the max click problem. An important difference between max click and the other problem, the first one, is that max click is actually a chain problem, meaning that it is mapped on to the hardware, uh, uh, the chimera graph using my name padding. Uh, we tried to put uh, on the energy plot the corresponding freeze out points. The freeze out points are hypothetical points in time 
where the improvement of the energy virtually stops. Uh, we try to determine such points by fitting a Boltzmann distribution to the energies of the final samples. Uh, but it didn't work uh, for the first problem type, uh, the chimerizing, uh, no freeze out point was found at all, the method failed. And in the second one, max click, the found freeze out point uh, shown uh, with the green line uh, uh, bottom left uh, is clearly incorrect, it's too early. Uh, so we'll see in the next slide that our slicing technique can instead be used to determine an approximation of the freeze out point in all cases. Um, and so, so we can compute a point uh, we call a, a quasi freeze out point uh, based on the slicing plot, plot uh, by fitting a degree one spline to it. Uh, this is shown on the plot on the top left, uh, and the quasi freeze out point is shown in green. Uh, we also studied the evolution of the number of broken chains, uh, the plot on the top right, and how the number of frozen qubits changes over time. These are the two plots on the bottom. Uh, we call a qubit frozen at some time point if its value at, at the moment, uh, plus one or minus one, stops changing uh, all the way until the end of the nil stays the same. Uh, so details about uh, these experiments and others uh, can be found uh, in the papers uh, listed on the bottom. Okay, finally, uh, we'll discuss uh, the H gain transform for planting an initial solution. So first, what is H gain? It is a feature allowing, allowing one to put the weight in a time dependent way on uh, the linear term of the problem Hamiltonian. Uh, for comparison, on the top is a standard uh, Hamiltonian and below it is the one that includes uh, a new function GFT, uh, which is allowed to take uh, values in the interval of minus five five uh, in D waves implementation. Uh, so our idea is uh, to use the linear terms HI to encode, to encode the initial solution uh, as in uh, the reverse annealing schedules, uh, while using the function GFT, the H gain function, to steadily reduce the amount of bias uh, towards that initial solution as uh, time goes on uh, during the annual. Uh, so how does this work? Let us first look at a problem that has no linear term. So this, this is good, this is easier since uh, if the input problem doesn't have a linear term, we can introduce our own linear term uh, to encode the initial solution. This uh, will work like that. So suppose vector x0 is the given initial solution. Uh, use the inverse values of that initial solution vector as coefficients of the linear term. Uh, so clearly, if G is positive, uh, the linear term will bias uh, the state towards uh, that planted initial solution. Uh, but what if there is a linear term in the original problem, and most, of, most problems do have linear terms, uh, then we convert it into a quadratic one, the linear term, by multiplying it by a new variable Z. Uh, so we want that variable Z to take eventually value plus one in an optimal solution. So this transformed problem will be equivalent to, uh, to the original one. And we can enforce that by uh, using a penalty. Okay, once we do that, then we use the method for Ising problems with, without linear terms that we uh, discussed earlier. 
Okay, so how do you determine G? You know, we want G to be large in the beginning and to be zero at the end, but how should it change in between? Also, uh, how to combine the schedule parameters for G uh, with the other parameters to get the best results? Uh, this is a hard problem and we are just beginning to scratch the surface. So we look at it uh, as an optimization problem. We give to the Nula some combination of parameters then do one or more annuals with these parameters and use the results we get from the annular, the energy, the average of the energy as uh, an objective function value uh, to guide the search towards a high quality solution. Um, again, we use uh, Bayesian optimization to determine uh, the parameters. Uh, so Bayesian optimization is good because it can do black box, uh, black box optimization and it works with noisy objective function, which is which are kind of results returned uh, by quantum annular. Uh, also, we do some simplifications to reduce the dim dimensionality of the problem. Uh, so here are some results. Uh, on the top, we show data from the optimization. On the left up is illustration of the search space with the corresponding goodness values as predicted by the Bayesian optimization algorithm. And the cross indicates the value of the best solution found. On the top right, uh, we have three optimal schedules found by the algorithm for the max cut problem uh, for three densities. On the bottom, uh, there is a comparison between uh, age gain and reverse annealing, uh, which is a technique that has similar objective as, as age gain. And here on the plot, higher is better. Uh, to make a fair comparison, the reverse annealing parameters were also optimized. Uh, the left is max cut problem and the right is uh, the max click problem. And we can see uh, for the max click problem on the left uh, that the two approaches are comparable with age gain uh, being slightly better. Uh, for the max cut problem on the right, uh, age gain is uh, clearly better. So this and other experiments that we did uh, show that uh, age gain seems to be uh, a viable alternative uh, to the reverse annealing. And on the bottom uh, is uh, the paper that has uh, more details. So finally, in conclusion, uh, we shared our experience on using uh, three of the more advanced features of D-Wave uh, for three different purposes. Uh, just giving the main ideas and uh, some results. Uh, for more information, uh, we can uh, look uh, in the corresponding uh, papers uh, listed here. Uh, thank you.